Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective, part two of our little Big 12 No Spring Breakdown with John <laughs> Tran. You like that, No Spring Breakdown? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're going to be talking Texas this video. What does Texas need to do to win the Big 12 and make it, hopefully, to the college football playoffs? Tran and I are going to answer that question. But first, we want to give a special shout out to our sponsors, Boss's Ranch. We just talked about it in the last video, but a Red River Ranch, HEB, Cold Produce, those of you in Central Texas, Waco, Houston, over going, going east of us, and our friends going up north towards the Fort Worth area. We appreciate you guys, even down in San Antonio. San Antonio has been picking up. A lot of you guys down there, um, even in San Marcos, have been hitting me up saying, hey, we got, we got our bottle of Boss's Ranch. And, uh, you know, phenomenal product, as I always say, but even better, better people uh, that you can support. Cold produce section, don't forget that. I don't want to hear from you brothers talking about, I couldn't find it, Steve. It's not the condiment <laughs> aisle. It's not going to be in the condiment <laughs> aisle. HEP Cold Produce, hey, check them out. Side note, too, uh, if you're in San Marcos, stop off at their uh, their brick and mortar, their pizza, pizza spot. Boss yeah. Pizza. Yep. Special shout out. So, uh, Tran, yes, sir. Let's let's talk, man. So we 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 did our full breakdown in part one of the conference. We we so let's put our let's now. I, I said at the beginning of that video, I wanted to take off our burn orange glasses. So let's put them back on. <laughs> I um, never took them off. I, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. So let's 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 cut to it, man. Um, what are some of the keys or things that you need to happen in your opinion that puts Tom Herman and this Texas team going into year four, Sam Ellinger senior year in position to finally secure the big 12 and break Oklahoma streak? Uh, number one, it's, it's going to be the same one as we had last year's health. Health is health will be huge for us because we, we have all the all the athletes in place, all the leaders in place to have a su successful run within the Big 12. Uh, number two, I think I think would have to come with focus. We've seen we've seen the mental lapses with this team the past three years. Uh, I think we even did a video on uh, Tom Herman's previous coaching job where he had same similar type of lulls throughout the season, and we can't have that. And I mean, you 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 can uh, do your analogy that you were talking about earlier today uh, with it. I'll, I'll let you I'll let you dive into that one because it's yeah. Really so before and and this is even before we get in because Tran has the schedule up here and 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 I showed a graphic of what what the actually I'll just show it right now since since I have it up of of the Big Twelve records since since Tom Herman's been in conference. Um, and as you guys can see here, 27 and three for Lincoln Riley and, and Tom Herman, 17 and 11, if you include the Big 12 championship loss. Now, what, when you get to 27 and three, there's a certain level of intensity or energy or whatever you want to call it, of focus, as Trant said, mm -hmm. that you bring every week versus your, whether your opponent is Tulsa or the opponent is Ohio State. There's a certain level at, at the ground floor, we're going to be – I always like to say, and this is something I learned in high school, uh, you know, playing high school football, right? Our intensity level, our focus level is going to be from 1 to 10, a gauge of 1 to 10. I've even made this analogy with Shaka Smart in Texas basketball, by the way. But OU is like Kansas basketball, right? They're always – their worst is going to be a level 8. Now, you can beat them. If they show up in, at an 8 and Kansas State last year shows up at a 10, you can win the game, right? Mm -hmm. Texas showed that the year before in the, in the Red River rivalry game where we, we played very, very well that day and we were able to pull out a win. But there's a certain level that Lincoln Riley is going to have his team playing at, okay? The issue, one of the issues that Texas has faced is we've shown we can get up to that level late. If we know we're facing an opponent that constantly brings it at that level, we can get up there. The issue is when we start looking down at this conference, we start looking at <laughs> Texas Tech, who's 8-19, and, and we lose to them in 2017. 
and 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 you lose, you know, uh, uh, the issues we had with Baylor last season, the issues we had with uh, 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 Oklahoma State over the last couple of years. I know we beat them last season, but the first two years. Look at this: how these teams are packed in on this on this sheet here. After OU, it's us, and then the bottom. You know, you have Texas Tech and Kansas are in single digits, and everybody else is neck and neck. Yep. Right? Packed in there. There's only a four-game difference between Baylor and Texas in terms of the win column. So in one of those years, they went 1-11. 1-11, and, 11. One and so, 11, exactly. Yeah. But when, when we're showing up to play Maryland two years in a row and our focus and our intensity is at a level six, I would say, and 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 you have to you automatically have to assume when people see that Texas on y'all's chest, they come in at a nine or a ten, bro, mm-hmm. that day, right? So you already get, you're already getting everyone's best shot. You know, it's the same thing I talk about in my Cowboys videos. But you have these weeks with these lulls, like you said in the season, where it just doesn't make sense. We were on, we thought we were past that in 2018, and then we went to Stillwater. And people were getting suspended, and we had people missing the first quarter. And it was just – it was nonsense going on, right? And that obviously played into the outcome of the game. That stuff – is this going to be the season where that, that type of stuff gets defeated? Now, last year, we can talk about the injuries. But they still had games where they – even with the injuries factored in, you had people who were very, very inconsistent week over week, right? whether it was TCU, whether it was Iowa State, which they had several chances to get back and win that football game, and they didn't take advantage. And the, the, this upstairs wasn't there. You can't tell me that that Iowa State team we saw, and again, injuries were a big part of this as well. But what level did they play at in the Alamo Bowl against Utah? Mm-hmm. What level did they play at in the Sugar Bowl against Georgia? And those are teams that those respective seasons, Georgia and Utah, constantly played at a 7, 8, 9, 10 level every single week. But when Texas brought their 9 or a 10, they were – you look at the game and it's like, wow, physically Texas is – they're just as big. They're mm-hmm. just as fast. They have a quarterback that can throw. What are we missing here? Right? So they got to put those things together. I understand you're losing a Devin Duvernay. I understand you're losing a Colin Johnson. Everybody's losing people. OU's losing Jalen Hurts. They're losing C.D. Lamb. We talked about some of the other losses in the previous video with what other teams are facing. But I'm so happy you brought up that, that point of focus, Tran. And that's, that's, the, that's the number one thing for me that Tom Herman has to get buttoned up. And there's something else I want to touch on a little bit later. Um, as we navigate through the schedule, what, what stands out to you in terms of what uh, is a concern and, and, and things that kind of excite you of where Texas can take advantage? Um, I think a huge concern is we're very backloaded on our schedule. I mean, the last three games are TCU, Iowa State, and Oklahoma State. And what's three the teams home? that what's the home? What's the so home it's in the at home, right? at home for TCU, at home for Iowa State, then a short turnaround to uh, at Oklahoma State. So uh, it's, Which is, it's I'm assuming that's going to be on Black Friday. Uh, it looks like it. Eleven twenty-seven. I don't have the calendar. Yeah, up, that, that I'm seems assuming like that's... it is. Yeah. Okay. But it's it. We're still traveling to Stillwater, and Stillwater we have just been awful at. So that's that's one thing. I mean, if we can get in unscathed all the way to that, you know, if we if we want two two out of two two to one on that, you know, I'd be very. I think that would be very um, successful. So one of the things that I think can factor into the focus component is, you know, that second week we have another monster again mm-hmm. in LSU. And this time we get to go on the road. And this has to be an opportunity. I'm going to say this. If Texas wants to be successful and win this conference, they need to be LSU and Death Valley. Mm-hmm. Why am I saying that? It's not a conference game. If we lose, Steve, what, what, how can that impact how we are? It's psyche. Mm-hmm. This, team, this team was close last year to beating one of the all-time great college teams in Austin. 
and we didn't know it then. At that moment in time, nobody was saying, oh, LSU's all-time great team. But one thing, though, is when you have eye tests, we knew at the start of the game, the way Joe Burrow was throwing the football, that this was different. It's right? going to be a long night, too. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, we, we, but as that game went on, we also saw Sam rise. We saw Brennan Eagles rise. We saw Devin, Devin Duvernay rise. Devin Duvernay, yep. Right. So Joseph Osai had a great game. Like, we saw guys rising to that level. And we were we even even as mad as I was after the third and seventeen at Tyler Orlando, I was like, man, Big Twelve is gonna have hell to pay the rest of the season. But I also think in the back of our minds, us not accomplishing that goal because the coaching staff put so much of an onus on that game, it was it like that. It was like the a balloon had been deflated when we played OU, and 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 we get we, our quarterback gets sacked what, nine times in that game, and, and our physicality starts to get questioned, and then we start to have some of the locker room issues and then the injury stuff on top of it. Mm-hmm. That LSU game this year at LSU is so reminiscent of 2005 at Columbus. Oh, Ohio State. Game. Ohio State. Because you look at the momentum that Texas team got and that confidence they got coming off a big bowl mm-hmm. win against Michigan or coming off a big bowl win against Utah. And, and look, that cannot be short-sighted, especially with no spring ball and the momentum because we played well for the first time in a long time on at all three levels because special teams, we were outstanding in the Utah mm-hmm. game. Those are the type of things I need to see against LSU. LSU, that should be beatable, right? I'm not saying LSU is going to be trash without Joe Burrow, but let's be realistic. Going into that game. 13 players to the draft, <laughs> including their long snapper that got yes, drafted. Yes, I know. Right? It may, I think it may have been 14 people that got drafted. I don't even remember how many people yeah. they had drafted, but it was some crazy amount, right? So you have, and then on top of that, you lose a Joe Brady to the mm-hmm. Carolina Panthers. You lose a Dave Aranda to the Baylor Bears. They are they're 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 reloading right now. Now are they? And it's it's reloading versus rebuilding, and that that whole narrative, and a lot of people there feel really, really good about what Miles Brennan brings to the table. But I also know what Scott Linehan brings to the table, being a Dallas Cowboys fan, uh, <laughs> and taking over that offense. I, I'm just saying I'd rather have facing Scott Linehan versus, versus whatever the hell Joe Brady was doing last year where he just overwhelmed everybody in, 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 in college football and then bounced. <laughs> I mean, let, let's be honest, though. I mean, Miles Brennan will, will get there. But Joe Burrow had the best college season a quarterback has had. So you know, to try to, to try to replicate that, it's going to be almost impossible to do. And we still almost beat him. We were right there. We were right there. So this LSU game, it's going to be very, very interesting. I'm not saying – all I'm saying is if Texas wants to be, have a seat at the big boy table, because this is the other thing I want to say, Tran. I don't think we need to be undefeated. I don't think Texas, the expectation should be go to go undefeated. But in order to win this, because there's a difference between having a hiccup where you still brought your intensity, you played hard, but maybe you played at eight and somebody played at a 10, i.e. Uh, 2008, Texas Tech, Texas were at Lubbock and mm-hmm. we played relatively well that night, but Texas Tech was just, incredible and they they beat us on a last second touchdown mm-hmm. I'm, I'm and and in that case it ended up costing us opportunity but still what i'm saying is i rather have that than what happened in stillwater with with chris boyd and them where we, we didn't even we literally did not even show up to the game at at the beginning and yep. we're kicking the football out of bounds right so there's a certain level that has to be brought and and i think that's going to be a recurring theme here and i think you can as a staff, you can build off of that. Because Tom Herman didn't fire friends and good coaches. Tim Beck, Todd Orlando, the guys he got rid of on this staff to make the adjustments, he didn't do that to 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 come in second, third, fourth place again. Nope. Nope. He didn't do that at all. Uh I, I think he knows he knows this year, you know, he, he has to do it with a senior Sam Ellinger, who is getting, I mean, he's, he's getting some pretty good Heisman hopeful. I mean, what, what was he ranked number three or something like that? 
uh, for the Heisman. Four. Yeah. So, but I mean, Heisman you, you can't, you can't, he's going go, probably thinking the same thing that we've been saying is like, we can't waste him. We can't waste his last, especially his last year. Uh, so he, I mean, he did a complete overhaul. I think he's going to, he's going to let the reins go for your to actually run the offense. I think he has his mind. So, and he's going to focus on actual coaching. Hopefully he's doing the, he's doing the same thing that coach O did. And he said, get him ready to play everyone. Just, just dominate everyone. And I think, I think that LSU game is a litmus test for us because if we can go in there and beat them by more than two scores or something like that, that sets the stage for the whole, whole, whole season, honestly. Because that confidence will be there. Uh, like I think you they said, just need to beat them. I, no, I no, mean, no. I, yeah. uh, but but imagine it, just just imagine the the confidence that's built in if they dominate. Say say like what we did to uh, to uh, Utah. All right. If Fair. we dominate, if we Fair. on all phases of the game we dominate, doesn't it set up for the whole for the whole season? I mean, what what team in in their psyche? What team could actually? replicate what a, 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 i already know right now cue up the lsu fan that jumps into the comments like what the hell are you guys talking about compared us to utah what, cue, cue we're that not, guy we're right not now. trust me we're, <laughs> you guys had the greatest team the greatest not, team yeah, but, yeah. So, so we're not gonna point but i'm just saying specifically if, if there's any chance that we're gonna actually beat them by two scores it'd be a time like now when they're in rebuild mode early yes, early early in the so, season yeah now, I agree with that, and and look, I, I'm just I'm just saying, go to De- Death Valley still levels oh, yeah. everything up, right? Because it's it's going to be one of the most intimidating and craziest environments, and who knows what the hell they'll have planned because they have this fake lie in their head that we treated them poorly when they came to Austin and all this type of stuff. You already know that storyline is going to happen, uh, assuming we are good to go uh, from COVID nineteen concerns, but. Um, if they're able to navigate past that and build that confidence up going into the big 12 slate, here are some things I, I personally need to see. And I want you to chime in. I think defensively moving to Chris Ash, they're, they're saying they're moving to a scheme where it's going to be athlete first. They're going to let their players fly. We have to see that at all three levels of the defense. Okay. You have, now we have people on this team who are a given. You just talked about Sam Ellinger, Sam Ellinger, is a given. Mm-hmm. I said on the previous video, you can make argument Chuba Hubbard or Tyler Wallace, the best player in the Big 12. Well, if Sam Ellinger wants to win the Big 12, why don't you be Big 12 player of the year, sir? Mm-hmm. With Mike Yurcich and, and the uptick of tempo, the uptick of snaps, and the type of statistics you're going to be able to put up, you, Sam Ellinger, even with the new wide receiving core, will have the opportunity to overwhelm your opponents just with improved coaching there, right? So we don't know what the upside is going to be for him. I'll get back to Sam in a second with, with some NFL stuff. He's a given. Samuel Cosme's a given. But going to the defense, Joseph Osai is a given. I know what I'm getting from him, mm-hmm. especially with the way I think he'll be utilized at, 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 the, at the jack position in this new defense. What do we need to see from the other two levels, the linebackers and the secondary? for us to 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 get to maximize the capabilities of this defense so the linebackers you're saying linebackers and secondary because there's two names there's two names i'm thinking of in my mind of they need to play up to their talent level caden stearns caden stearns is number one and i say overshown on on, overshown yep in in the the overshown if 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 they had a do they have a per for football his would have been off the chart <laughs> last year. Uh, so I, I just want to see that co- as a constant. Um, the, thing, the thing with me is one, one thing that I've, I'm always touching on is we have leadership at each level now. And we go, we go back to we always compare everything to the 2005 team. One of the biggest stories was Vince always organized workouts, summer workouts, without any of the coaches there, and that's how they, sure. that's how they bonded. What they're doing now during COVID, they're all working out at uh, Sam Ellinger's house. Who's there? Joseph Fosai, Sam Ellinger, uh, Keadre Colbert. Kate Stearns, yeah, Kate is, Stearns there. Yeah. is there. I mean, all, all, you see those leaders putting in the work together. I mean, everyone's going to follow suit. So I, I'm not worried about the prep, uh, preparation aspect of them being in shape. I just want them to uh, play up to the level that we know they can play up to. Because we've seen Caden Stearns play out of his mind. 
you know, and, and he's going to have to do that when, because Brandon Jones is not there as his little crutch to help, to help him, uh, to help him in the secondary. Well, he'll still have, he'll still have a great player next to him, whether it's Chris Brown, yeah, yeah. whether it's BJ Foster, whether it's Chris Adamora, although, you know, Chris Adamora might start at nickel. Mm-hmm. There's, there's going to be a very, very good, talented football player and right depth. next to him, and, and including depth. Mm-hmm. I'm not worried about the corners, to be honest with you, especially yeah, with my- what they're moving to and how I think they're going to let them play. Um, so Deshaun Jameson, you're free. Jalen Green, you're free. Um, uh, Kenyatta Watson, we'll see what you can do on the outside. We know Anthony Cook and Chris Adamore will be battling out on the inside. So – some of these guys are going to be freed up to be able to play with a little bit more technique of what they feel comfortable with, being able to attack the football. Things aren't just flying at them where they're left on an island, you know, because we, we decided to blitz the house and, and they're, you know, now I got to cover three people on the back end. <laughs> so they'll be able to, to, to play with a little bit more confidence, I feel like. But something you brought up earlier, getting guys to play up to their mm-hmm. billing, up to their talent level. These guys are four or five-star players, and, and some of y'all just watched across, uh, the uh, across the board, right? Yeah. And, and I watched this video on YouTube, and some of y'all saw Princely. For those who don't know, Princely, who went to, to Florida, that was from Maynard, uh, who ended up – I just say he went to Florida. But he has a YouTube channel, and he talked about – why he chose Florida over Texas. And the number one thing he mentioned, because he said he, he said emotionally he loved Texas, 18 minutes from his house. He's a tech. You could hear it in his voice. He's really a Texas fan. Yeah. Right? You look, look at the young man's bedroom. But the problem was he said, he said, I said this about uh, your boy, Keely Ringo. And he said it in his video, the bag I had him? to make, I had to make, <laughs> We got to clean it up for the fans, Tran. I had to make a business decision. <laughs> but when, but in all seriousness, that business decision is, are they developing their guys and are they being showcased for the NFL? And Texas has had a bad habit of not doing that to, to, to maximize everybody. I understand Brandon Jones went the third round. That's awesome. Brandon Jones was also the number one rated safety when he came out of high school. We got to get guys playing. The, the people that are here now, were highly, highly rated. Tom Irm also has no more excuses because this is these are all the people he recruited, right? These are top classes. And Princely said, said it pretty good. Hey, Texas has been having top 10 classes. How come they're not first-round picks? None of them, right? So this is where we get to see the coaching staff change with Chris Ash getting these guys playing with confidence. Jay Valai with the corners. Cole Mahutza with the linebackers, everybody that's involved here, right? You know, you have Mark Hagan, Mark Hagan, Oscar Giles, all these people working with these guys. Can Keandre Coburn become one of the most dominant linemen in the Big 12? I know that's your boy. Mm-hmm. But can we get him playing at a level that Puna Ford played at with his size, where he's consistent week over week, getting double team, and he's still whooping ass? Yeah. That's what we need to see from this football team especially on the defensive side of the ball. So going back to your, your draft, uh, uh, hey, how come they're not first-round draft? That's a big thing to get these kids fired up because if you watch the NFL draft, it was basically a highlight reel on Texas. <laughs> I mean, it, every play I saw, it was – All it was those LSU yeah. kids, all the yes. OU kids, it was, absolutely. So I would be playing that – play that C.D. Lamb uh, catch over and over again be like, hey – you're going to let this happen to you again. You guys just got cleated basically mm-hmm. because you could, you guys just were unathletic comparative to him. So let's, let's play, let's play physical fast and up to your abilities. And, and the beauty of it too is they, when you're playing, going back to my levels analogy, because this is, again, my coach said this all the time, when you're playing at a level nine or a level 10, you're having fun. The game yeah. is, like football is legit orgasmic at that point I, yeah. i'm not even trying to be funny like the utah game you could tell like when when deshaun they james was a catching up, they were having a blast i want people out there dancing talking shit having that energy we saw with lsu last year and coach O. it didn't matter if it was northwestern state 
or Auburn. They were playing at a 9 or a 10. And come meet us here. Because we're going to come here and we're going to turn up. We only get one Saturday to perform. Yeah. And that's the way Texas has – is look, we've been doing breakdowns on this channel of what the last few weeks, Tran, the last dance. Mm -hmm. And what do you keep telling me every week about Michael Jordan? His preparation, his – maniacal focus his his mental aspect he's just all of that man yeah. all of that that's what that's what separated him i'm not saying they gotta go out there and be michael jordan i'm not saying that i want him to but but the, <laughs> great, but, the but the aspect of greatness right and 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 fulfilling what is in front of you it's not just on the coaching staff the players have to be accountable to that as well. Sam Ellinger has to be accountable to that. Joseph Osai, do you want to be a first-round pick in 2021? Then go be a badass next season. Go play like Utah every game. Every game. <laughs> every game. I, 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 It can't be, you know, we're looking around, shit, where's 46? Is he out there? You know, like, I can't have that. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying he's that, you know, he's, he, he's the culprit or anything like that. I'm just saying Caden Stearns, I need you to be that all-world guy that we know you can be, that you have the potential to be. Um, so, I, I, you know, as a Texas fan, I feel as good as anybody else. We talked about this this league, five, maybe even six teams that, that feel good about mm -hmm. competing and for a Big 12 championship. And and my message, again, to Tom Herman is if we if our mental's right, you know, Tom Herman used to say all the time, sometimes I thought he was full of it. It's like our best is good enough because Jason Garrett used to say something like that. But now with this t this roster right now, you're bringing in a Tariq Black. Let's talk about him from Michigan. Yeah. Gil Brandt and his top 50 seniors eligible for the NFL draft. You know, Tariq Black made that list. So they're basically giving him a pass because he was playing with Shea at Michigan. <laughs> Hey, he got it. He got injured too. He got a, a right, right, injury, right. But, but yeah, no. I mean, like, w w what did he get last year? Three hundred yards, three hundred, four hundred yards, something like, like that. Like right. That. But none uh, of those Michigan receivers did anything like they're. Yeah, he had to. twenty-five re receptions yeah. in this Mike Yurcich offense. He, he should definitely be able to replicate that with with more yardage, yards after catch. So I, I could I could see him as a twenty-five to thirty-five receptor. I mean, he doesn't have a legit go-to guy yet. Sam, so or a proven no. go-to guy. So I mean, he could be that guy. Who knows? Step up. It could be him. Could be yeah. Jake Smith. It could be Brennan mm -hmm. Eagles. I like my options. Yeah. Could be Joshua Moore. Could be Marcus Washington. Could be Alvante Woodard. I like my options. That's a lot of people. Malcolm Epps. <laughs> Malcolm Epps. Right. Yeah. Like, like I got K. Brewer still. It's scary. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying all these people. You know, but the the amount of of weapons, even though they may be unproven in terms of productivity. It's there in this particular scheme where they will – they're not – you know, I'm not going to something, but Mike Yersage ain't here to pigeonhole people anymore. You're going to see people lining up all over the place. Now, the scheme will be similar in terms of our run game, so because I do want to talk about um, the, the run game stuff here in a second. But just the variations we'll see mixed with the tempo. That's one thing you saw with LSU. People couldn't breathe when they were on the field. When they really wanted to get, accelerate and go fast and with the trigger man that knew what he was doing and could, could put everybody where they needed to be, there were times where Joe Burrows knew he had a touchdown before the ball snapped, mm -hmm. right? Because of a certain thing they see, they're, they're going to, oh, they, they, these dudes ain't even lined up. Boom. Jamar Chase over the top. We can get there with Mike Yersus. We've seen him do this in this conference. I have no doubt. Our run game. We might have the best set of backs in the in the conference as as a committee. Uh, the stable, right? a stable, as a yeah. stable. Ch yeah. Chuba, no, look, nobody's touching Chuba. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not Chuba's number to... one. Chuba's number <laughs> one in pro probably the 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 nation. So in the nation, right? Yeah. But what I'm getting in Keontae Ingram, and you saw when the brother was healthy against Utah, he can be as good as anybody, right? And then I'm getting a five star dynamic player out of Arizona and a Bijan Robinson. Well, who knows what we get as as our as our jack of all trades in Jordan Whittington? Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot 
on the table for Texas and the amount of weapons That's that might two be. five stars, by the way, in the back backfield. I mean, and and I know he's going to be moving to slide and, and yeah. playing all, but, but he's going to be all over. He's going to be all over, yeah. right? And I also get an offensive line that I feel very good about. I talked mm-hmm. about Sam Cosme. I saw him as high as number eleven or ten on some mock drafts, one in the first round. I feel good about Derek Kerstetter. I feel good about a junior Angela who started every game last year. So, what's the? There's no more excuses. No excuses. Some of the Facebook chats that we're in, uh, people have been using the hashtag, and it's so appropriate. Show me 2020. That's where we're. That's where we're at. You didn't change up this whole coaching staff to go eight and five. And I'm not trying to be. I'm not, again. You didn't do that to go eight and five. Yeah. Anything else you want to touch on um, before we wrap up here? Because for for us, in terms of what, what needs to happen, I think it's the mentality, the focus, and our athletes being explosive on both sides of the ball, all, all yeah. three sides of the ball. Yeah, no, no, I agree. But uh, to, I guess, make these the, this two-part series full circle, going back to how the parity in this, in this league is, and it just being so close, even 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 though OU is twenty seven three uh, for the last three years, it a lot of the a lot of their games with us have been close. Uh, so the thing that we we should touch on is is the um, is is the special teams, and I think we we might have the best the best field goal kicker in the league. I mean, Dicker, and that could actually decide some of the games. So I hope his focus is is on point. I hope he's out right now kicking field goals. Well, not right now, but you know, right. you know what I'm saying? Kick kicking field goals, get going through the mental reps, everything like that because he could be very important to our team. Completely agreed. And and you know, uh, Gabe Burkett was outstanding last year for for Oklahoma as well after mm-hmm. the other guy got in trouble. But Cameron Dicker's been clutch, you know, he's won games for us. We feel good about him. Consist again, lapses too cuz he missed some bunnies. Oh yeah. It's like you know, lock in, bro. Same so we know what you can do. Just lock in. Um special teams. I'm excited for, for the first time in a long time where I already saw the influence that Andre Coleman had. Now I bring in a Jay Bowler. Now I bring in a Coleman Hutzler into room. All these guys, all these different coaches that have coached special teams over the years so we can at least you know, all that hidden yardage that people always talk yes. about that we just screwed up so many times last season. Now we can take advantage and get back to the mid 2000s where we took advantage of those hidden yards and made it easier on our offense uh, to be dynamic. So I, I, I just feel as though that is, as you said, especially in these close games, when you go on the road to a Stillwater, when you go to Dallas to play OU, right? Uh, when you're going against a coach like a Gary Patterson or a Matt Campbell where the you know the attention to details is going to be at a level ten. Those are some of the ways you can pull out some wins mm-hmm. when you may be at an eight versus a ten in your in your focus or intensity scale. So um, this is this has been a terrific conversation, man. And I know we didn't have a spring, and that's why it's so hard to 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 break this stuff down because you know we don't just get to watch our team in the spring, but we get to see all these teams and see some guys gain some confidence or some young quarterbacks take some rest. But this is a period of time that Texas has to take advantage. And I've said this earlier before. You have a veteran coach and you have a veteran quarterback. And there's very few teams in this conference that can say they have both during a period of time where no one's been able to do teamwork and have a real spring. You should be ahead of everybody else, my opinion. Right. No. So we'll see. Uh, we're going to see. We're going to find out a lot of things this season. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully good. Hopefully, Hopefully good. Hopefully good. Yeah. Guys, make sure you get Boss's Ranch, H-E-B mm-hmm. Cold Produce. Again, special thank you to them sponsoring this series. We've been breaking down the Big 12. We broke down Texas just now. Tran, is there anything else you want to add before I find, we, we do our final sign off? No, I just miss I miss the uh, – in the studio work you know i know man (laughs) i know no we'll be uh i know matthew hit me up the other day he's coming back into town uh to 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 resume some some school work here in austin so uh we'll we'll be syncing up as you know things things are very very fluid right now but um you know we'll be continuing and those of you who've been sending us recommendations and comments on some things i'm not going to 
we're not going to do every single thing that gets recommended and we may tweak some things but uh for those of you who continue to reach out thank you for supporting the channel supporting our content and make sure you like the video from an algorithm yeah. standpoint like it, it really really helps it really really it goes a long way mm -hmm. when you guys like these videos and they're able to show up in other people's recommended videos that are looking for some of the content that you guys are absorbing yourself so appreciate everyone out there Tran. Thank you for your time, brother. Thank you for having me, man. Really Absolutely, man. It. Absolutely. And, um, you know, hey, you made another lap around this beautiful earth, man. So yeah. um, nobody else I'd rather do this with, brother. So Same appreciate here. you guys. And as always, horns always up.